There you go, just updated. It is a category two now um, with the 1 p.m. advisory. Just getting this in, notice north-northeast movement is sped up even more. Uh, so sustained winds at 100 miles per hour, gusting to 115. The pressure is down one millibar, so it's not rapidly strengthening, and I would imagine <clears throat> That's about as strong as it's going to get as it approaches us. But regardless, I mean, you've got a strong storm headed our way uh, and still expecting landfall somewhere in here as a category two storm. So that is if you're just joining us, we just got this in a couple of minutes or just seconds ago. 100 mile per hour sustained hurricane that makes it a category two and it is speeding up north northeast at 20 miles per hour pressure at 975. Look at that 155 miles southwest of New Orleans. So it is booking it and we know it's going to get here later this afternoon. So I was talking about these winds. We've got the shower starting to creep up into the area. Winds are fairly gusty. We're now gusting to 38 at Shell Beach, and you can actually see the entire eye of the system now on our radars. We've got all of our Gulf Coast radars turned on. There's the center of it clear as day. That's where the most intense part of the hurricane is going to be, but it is heading towards the northeast. Now the big question is where does it make landfall? I will say uh, I was tracking the eye here, and these are just the center locations as we were tracking it, and this is over four hours. This is where it was four hours ago, two hours ago and then uh, about 30 minutes to an hour ago. So you notice it's slowly making that northeast turn. Here's the forecast line. Uh, it looks like it's tracking near it or just east of the forecast line is what it looks like at the moment. So it'll be interesting to see. Does that mean it come in a little bit further towards the east and come and skirt the metro? Or does it maintain that more northerly component and move more into the metro? That's a very tricky thing to forecast because it is such a minor detail when you're talking about forecasting. But to give you an idea of when you could really start to see those most intense winds. Now the winds are already picking up and they'll continue to do so through the afternoon. But when you could experience those most damaging winds, 70, 80, 90 mile per hour winds, um, this is the timeline we're looking at. As you get to the coast, Chauvin, Galliano, in between four and five o'clock is when it looks like the worst of the winds will start to pick up. Destraham, we're talking the New Orleans Metro, in between uh, closer to six o'clock, maybe a little bit before 6 p.m. And then as you go towards the North Shore slide L, you can see the worst of the winds start to pick up as you go to around 7 p.m. Uh, also portions of the North Shore in between seven and eight. As you get up towards Picayune, maybe by 7.30 to 7.45, you start to see those most intense winds move in. The Mississippi coast is gonna be a little bit later with the most intense part of the hurricane that will be closer to eight and nine o'clock and that's when you're talking wind gusts potentially over 100 miles per hour. Let's break it down by parish by parish um, and there's no changes to the forecast with it now being a category two storm. It's just verifying that the forecast is will verify. So main impacts on the North Shore 6 to 10 p.m. That's your time frame. Not a whole lot of rain, two to four inches, but street flooding is possible. Wind sustained 50 to 70 miles per hour, gust to 90 miles per hour. That is primarily from Mandeville going over to Slide L in this white zone, but you're still probably going to see damaging winds in the blue and purple zone. The uh, red zone there, 50 to 60 mile per hour sustained winds with gusts to 70 is possible, and then lower totals as you get west of Hammond. Here in the metro, all areas could see 70 plus uh, mile per hour winds. Uh, we've bumped up our Gus potentially right there on the lakefront could be pretty strong. Can't roll out getting close to uh, over 90 miles per hour. Uh, storm surge three to five feet. That's outside the levee protection system. The river parishes are still going to see gusty winds, and you could very easily see 75 plus as you get closer to the metro, like Laplace, uh, Bouti, and Luling. As you get off into the river parishes and further past uh, Lutcher, um, you're looking at winds probably 30 to 40 sustained with gust over 50. So even power outages are possible there. Same story. I've had some folks asking about the Bayou, uh, Terrebonne, Lafouche, uh, Homa, and Thibodeau. You could certainly get very damaging winds later this afternoon starting 3, 4, 5 o'clock. Gust over 90. That is possible. That will do damage. That will knock out power and trees um, and things like that. Going down into Port Fouchon, Grand Isle, I think that's where we'll start to see the 100 plus mile per hour wind gusts. And some models have been throwing out 110 to 115 mile per hour gusts. It is possible. And that's what we're predicting here for St. Bernard, especially Lower St. Bernard. All of Plaquemines Parish will see the highest winds here in southeast Louisiana five to seven feet of storm surge for those areas, and that is from two to 9 p.m. So your impacts will start a little bit earlier, and then let's end it with the Mississippi coast here. You've got uh, five to 10 p.m. your main impacts gust over 100 miles per hour.